So today we are going to discuss about the norma lateralis. When you will see the skull bone from the lateral aspect, so this view is known as the norma lateralis. What are the bones you will see in this view? You have the frontal bone, parietal bone, occipital bone, temporal bone, sphenoid bone, zygomatic bone, mandible, maxilla, nasal and the lacrimal bone. So these are the bones seen in the norma lateralis. Now what are the sutures seen in the norma lateralis? So you will see the coronal suture between the frontal and the parietal bone, parieto squamosal suture between the parietal and the temporal bone, lambdoid suture between the parietal and the occipital bone, occipito mastoid suture between the occipital and the mastoid part of the temporal bone, parieto mastoid suture between the parietal and the mastoid process of the temporal bone, sphenofrontal suture between the sphenoid and the frontal bone, sphenoparietal suture between the sphenoid and the parietal bone, sphenosquamosal suture between the sphenoid and the temporal bone, and sphenozygomatic suture between the sphenoid and the zygomatic bone. Then you have the zygomatico temporal suture between the zygomatic and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Zygomatico frontal suture between the zygomatic and the frontal bone. So these are the main sutures you will see in the norma lateralis. Other sutures we have discussed in the norma frontalis view. So what are the other features? You have to trace the temporal lines. So two lines you will see on the lateral aspect. One is the superior temporal line. If you trace the superior temporal line, it will fade out in the posterior part. But the inferior temporal line, if you will trace, it will continue as the supramastoid crest. So initially these two lines are combined, but later they will separate from each other. So these are the superior and inferior temporal line. Zygomatic arch. So this is the horizontal bar. You can see this zygomatic arch is formed by the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. It is having the superior border which will continue anteriorly as the temporal lines and posteriorly as the supramastoid crest. Inferior border if you will see it presents a tubercle that is known as the articular tubercle and behind the tubercle you will see the mandibular fossa. Behind the fossa you will see one opening that is known as the external acoustic meatus. If you will see the external acoustic meatus, it is having the anterior wall, posterior wall, roof and the floor. So anterior wall, floor and the lower part of the posterior wall is formed by the tympanic plate and this posterior superior portion is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone. Next we have the supramatal triangle. This is the supramatal triangle just posterior superior to the external acoustic meatus. It is bounded in front by the posterior superior margin of the external acoustic meatus, above by the supramastoid crest and behind if you will take a horizontal or uh, uh, sorry if you will take a vertical line from the posterior margin of the external acoustic meatus. So this will form a triangle. This triangle is known as the supramatal triangle. So mastoid entrum lies deep to this triangle. Then we have the mastoid process. 
this mastoid process is projecting downward behind the external acoustic meatus. So this is the mastoid process. Next we have the asterion. This point is known as the asterion where you will see the parietomastoid, occipitomastoid and the lambdoid sutures will meet. So this point is known as the asterion. In the fetal life you will see a membranous gap that is known as the posterior lateral fontanel. Next we have the styloid process. This you can see it is a thin long bony process projecting downward. It is a part of the temporal bone. Now the temporal fossa. This is the fossa or depression on the lateral as aspect of the normal lateralis. It is bounded above by the temporal lines and below by the zygomatic arch and the supramastoid crest. So this point where these four bones are meeting, this edge shape area is known as the terion where the frontal bone, parietal bone, sphenoid bone and the squamous part of the temporal bone will meet. This point is known as the terion. And this area is uh, situated 4 cm above the midpoint of the zygomatic arch. If any injury at this point, it can injure the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery. Now last portion we have the infratemporal fossa and the pterygo maxillary fissure. The infratemporal fossa is lies just below the zygomatic arch and this is the infratemporal fossa. Medially it is bounded by the lateral pterygoid plate and laterally by the mandible. Pterygo maxillary fissure. This is a triangular gap between the posterior surface of the maxilla and the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone. So this triangular gap is known as the pterygo maxillary fissure and infratemporal fossa will communicate with the pterygo palatine fossa through this fissure. Thanks for